Hey, how you doing? This is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com. Today's video is entitled, Why It's Okay to Hate AA. <gasps> Why do I expose myself to this, huh? Well, look, the reason I'm making this video is because I've noticed something. When I go around the world and I do my quit drinking boot camps, people occasionally come up to me and they whisper in my ear and they say, I went to AA and I didn't like it. Shh. Like it's a secret, like, oh, don't let anyone hear that because I don't want the abuse. And I get that because there is this almost like cultish following of Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm, I'm sure it's not the majority, but there is a very vocal minority that stamp their feet and get very angry if you suggest there is any other way to deal with alcohol problems than AA. And, you know, I experience this a lot when I post on Facebook. Always someone who's been to an AA meeting will say, there's only one way to deal with alcohol problems, and that's Alcoholics Anonymous. Everything else is a scam, a gimmick, or a fad. And that's, it's a bit strange, to be honest with you, because you don't see that with any other drug. You know, if you posted on Facebook, I quit drinking, uh, I quit smoking with uh, nicotine chewing gum, you wouldn't get a load of abuse from the people who say you have to do it with hypnosis, would you? You wouldn't get a load of comments from people who say, absolutely ridiculous, you've been scammed. The only way to stop smoking is with patches. The smokers would just go, OK, well, good for you. Great. Get on with your life. For some reason with alcohol, unless you do it the way that everyone says you have to do it, you're a terrible bad person and the person that is helping you is even worse. They're a scam artist or a con man or something. And it's weird, you know, but I think this is a very strange drug because not only are the people who are drinking the drug in this strange bubble. Remember, we live in a society where it's the people who choose not to drink the poison who are considered weird and boring. We live in a world where the people who choose to drink poison on a daily basis are labeled fun and normal. It doesn't make any sense, but that's this drug. So it's probably not unusual that the, the, the kind of situation around quitting is equally as strange. So, you know, don't get me wrong. AA is a wonderful organization and it has undoubtedly saved millions and millions of lives over the last 70 years. And for that reason alone, it deserves our praise and appreciation and applause and all everything else that it deserves. I don't have a problem with AA. And if you want to use AA and you go and you like it and it works for you and you end up sober, fantastic. Great. What I don't like is the, the bullying that goes on that insists that there is only one way. And unless you do it their way, you're a failure, or you've been scammed, or you're doing a gimmick, or you whatever. That's what I don't get. Because when I'm thinking about, you know, when I see these comments from AA members who say there's only one way, I'm thinking, why are you so afraid? What are you afraid of? Because it must be coming from fear. You know, if someone else is using a different process to quit drinking, why does that make you so afraid? I don't, I don't really understand it, but I know it's there. And so a lot of people go to AA and they, they, eat, they, they don't like it or they hate it or they just find it doesn't resonate with them. And they get, then they get really scared because then they start to assume that they're the problem. Because, hey, you can't criticize AA. It's been around for 70 years and it's the default option, isn't it? You say to anyone, I've got a problem with alcohol, what do they say? Go to AA. So it can't be the system, must be me. And so they start beating themselves up. Say, oh, what a terrible person I am. And what do drinkers do when they feel low self-esteem? When they feel stressed and anxious, they drink. So a lot of people go to AA, don't like it and end up drinking more and start getting very down on themselves. And they can't express their feelings because there's this culture of, don't you dare criticize AA. It's the only way. Don't you dare object. But here's the reality. Look, there's a reason why it doesn't work for a lot of people. Let's say this box here represents all the people in the world 
you have a problem with alcohol, okay? Let's say somewhere around here, all these people here are not what you would call an alcoholic, they're just problem drinkers. These are the sort of people who are getting home from work and they're, they're drinking a six pack every night or they're getting the kids to bed and they're opening a bottle of wine and downing a bottle of wine a night or two bottles of wine a night. And they're doing it every day. And they've started to get worried about their drinking and they tried to stop and found they couldn't. <gasps> now they're panicked. But they're entirely functional. You know, they're holding down jobs. They're in a relationship. They've, they're not getting thrown in jail in the drunk tank. They've got, they're not getting DUIs. You know, they're entirely functioning in society and perhaps most of the people who know them don't even know that they have a problem. But their drinking is in a loop. They can't stop it and it's making them miserable and they're starting to see serious negative consequences like ill health, financial problems, relationship problems, and so on. Uh, that'll, that'll be AA. Um, <laughs> and then you've got people over here in this little box here who are the real purebred alcoholics. These people are completely dependent on the drug. They're physically dependent on it. Um, you know, it's started to take over their life. They, they can't hold down a job. Their relationships are collapsing around them. They have dire financial situations. They can't go more than a few hours without drinking. If they stop drinking, they get severe withdrawal. So they're, they're in a pretty dark place. They've hit rock bottom, basically. And AA was created 70 odd years ago to help these people, okay? But because it's been around for so long and it's so ingrained in society that no matter how you describe your drinking problem, AA is always the default. So these people, you know, if they do express their concerns and worries to someone, the chances are they're gonna be advised to go to AA, even as though actually it wasn't designed for them unless they've got money. If they're wealthy enough, then they'll be advised to go to rehab, okay? Now rehab <laughs> is, is the same as AA, but they charge you $1,000 a day. I know I, I'm oversimplifying that, but okay, so if you go to rehab, they're gonna give you some drugs to help you with the cravings and you're gonna be monitored 24 seven by a very expensive doctor and you're gonna stay in a very nice environment. But essentially, then they're gonna to default to the 12 steps. So rehab is basically AA for people who've got money. It's the same process, but you do it in a nicer surrounding. So instead of a community center or a church hall, you're in a very nice hospital with a very expensive doctor. So if you've got 30 grand to spend on recovery, then, then rehab's where they'll suggest you go. If you haven't, then they're gonna suggest you go to AA. But because AA wasn't designed for the vast majority of these problem drinkers, a lot of these people here, they go to AA and they sit in the meeting and they think, I hate this. This is just, oh, I hate every second of it. This is horrible. It's depressing the hell out of me. It doesn't speak to me at all. It doesn't resonate. But they're too scared to express that opinion because because of the, the myth, the, the story that AA is the only one. And so they either carry on and be miserable or they leave and, and drink more because now, now what do they do? Their ultimate safety net is gone. You know, often going to AA is the ultimate step. There's nothing beyond that unless you've got 30 grand. And so if you're one of these people, when I described problem drinkers earlier, if you're one of those people and you thought, yeah, that's me, that's me, I've got a job, got a wife, got a husband, drinking every night, hate it, can't stop. And you've been to AA and you didn't like it. Well, here's the story. Stop beating yourself up. You're not the problem. It's, don't take this in, internally and say, well, you know, if it works for other people, why didn't it work for me? Why do I hate it? What a terrible person I am. Stop beating yourself up. It's entirely logical it didn't work for you. It wasn't designed for you in the first place. And so I think it's time that we stop using a broad sword to attack this alcohol problem we have in the Western world and saying that there's only one solution and this is it. These are the people that I am focused on helping. And this is what my course is designed for. And I'm not arrogant enough to say that you must do it my, my way. Do it whatever way that works. Just do it. Do something. 
But I'm, I want you to stop worrying that there's a right way to do this and a wrong way. Or, and I want you to stop looking at the comments on Facebook and social media that say that you have to do it this way, otherwise you're getting it wrong or you're going to fail. You've got no chance because it's just bullying. That's all it is. It's just bullying. And just like the kid at school who bullies another kid, it comes from fear. I don't know what they're afraid of. I don't know what they're scared of, but I'm 100% certain that that sort of attitude that you do it my way or no way at all comes from fear. And the last thing you need when you're trying to make this monumental change in your life, getting the attractively packaged poison out of your life is a dose of fear from someone else looking down from their ivory tower. I don't care how you do this. It doesn't have to be my way. It can be any way. I just encourage you to have faith in yourself and know that you're not the problem and just get it fixed whatever way works for you. Thank you for watching. Please comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. I think we just hit 20,000 subscribers, which is fantastic. Let's make it 50,000. Uh, and why not join me today for a free quit drinking webinar at the website stopdrinkingexpert.com. Thanks for watching. No more hangovers, no more mornings of guilt and regret, and no willpower required to get there. Really consider this because it's different. It's, it's different to anything you can find out there, and it's, it gives you real mental freedom from the clutches of alcohol. Get my best selling ebook free today at stopdrinkingexpert.com. Without a doubt, if you can make it happen, if you can find a way, if it's something that you feel the heart strings pulling that you need to make a change in your life, then you need to pull out all the stops. Pull out all the stops to make it happen and beat it. It's just so worth it. Why did I waste all those years? Being in my middle 60s now, I wasted so many years drinking. Find out why this is the Nets' only five-star rated quit drinking solution. And get your free ebook today at stopdrinkingexpert.com.